hello and welcome once again to Romance of the Three Games. Three more stages for you this week, the first of which is going to be stage three of Wu's Musu mode playing as Sun Jian. Last time we defeated Zhang Liang who was besieging one of the Han Empire's fortresses and it says here that Sun Jian is becoming a central figure in the Imperial Army as a result, uh, which is pretty close to what really happened. So now the story is that Zhang Xiao, the leader of the Yellow Turban Rebellion, has put all his forces together at one point and all of Han's forces and Han's allies are going to pile in and see if we can take him down. The stage of the Yellow Turban Rebellion. Now this stage is going to be made much easier by the fact that I've completed the other two Yellow Turban stages already because the two commanders Zhang Bao and Zhang Liang who I defeated in those battles will not make an appearance on the battlefield today which makes things a little bit easier and actually changes the way this stage works in general. The objective is to defeat Zhang Xiao, he's just sitting at the back. Pei Jin is our commander, the historical Han general who had overall command of operations against the Yellow Turban Rebellion. We've got Cao Cao, Sun Jian and Liu Bei on our side and uh, I'll be Sun Jian so I'll be moving up the west side. Lots of enemy officers, a lot of them start with lower morale though than our allied officers which means this battle is very easy, uh, you almost don't have to play it. Unleash your rage my chosen children! So here come the yellow turbans. Unleash your rage upon the Han and bring forth the age of the yellow turbans! Cow -cow so to begin I just need to move forward really. From the east. While Sun Jian attacks from the west, the volunteer forces will break through the middle and join the other two forces. Liu Bei will be with those Listen, volunteer brothers, forces. We must have vengeance. We must make them feel Lord Zhang Bao's pain. They are the ones that struck down Lord Zhang Liang. Brothers, we must kill them. So you can see that because Zhang Bao and Zhang Liang have been defeated, two of the enemy officers, Zhang Mang Cheng and Bo Zhang get powered up and hyped to try and get revenge which means they're harder to defeat than they would have been if we hadn't defeated Zhang Lang and Zhang Bao uh, but it's still an equal trade-off big fail from me there as I fell short of my charge attack very embarrassing um, yeah it's still easier than it would have been because Zhang Bao and Zhang Liang uh, were more powerful than they were so we're still fighting an easier force with fewer officers to contend with If Zhang Bao and Zhang Liang had been on the field, uh, they would occupy uh, the left and right sides of the map. Uh, if you look at the top right hand side of the map when I go back to the uh, full map view, you'll see there are some empty sections in the enemy formation, which is where they would have been. And if they were there, they would have used magic attacks to try and take out some of our troops, which is quite annoying. Here's Zhang Mang Cheng. He's going to go down pretty easy because I just picked up an uh, attack times two power up. He has a sub officer with him, Guan Hai. Now, I want to defeat Guan Hai before I defeat Zhang Mang Cheng, uh, because if I defeat Zhang Mang Cheng first, Guan Hai will try and retreat from the battlefield, meaning it's hard for me to kill him and get the stat increasing item that he'll drop when he dies. So I want to try and take him out first. I've got this ample opportunity. Way up on him with my Musu attack. Now Zhang Mang Cheng is going to go down pretty easy and drop an item, pretty handy. So now the west flank has been pretty much secured. There's nothing between Sun Jian's forces and Zhang Zhao because I know he's going to have high morale. I can just let his forces continue on. Uh, so I personally decided to go and help out my volunteer forces in order to pick up some more experience and stat up items. Fighting with Pei Yun Chao, one of the two units the volunteer forces are facing up against. A lot of one of these power battle things, uh, weapon death, I think they're cool. But that's because you just have to mash all of the keys wildly, and if you do it fast enough, the enemy will be staggered for a few seconds and give you a chance to attack. Liu Bei's morale started dropping there, which enemy is very unfortunate. Defeated. You also saw on the messages there that Jia Haldun over on the east flank uh, routed Deng Mao. Uh, it was quite annoying, but one of the reasons I wanted to head east uh, was to go and take out Deng Mao. So I, I headed even further east and I found Cheng Yuanji. Unfortunately, when I was on the way to Cheng Yuanji, Bo Zhang's unit was routed by Cao Cao, which meant two of the officers who were over here were defeated before I even arrived. Uh, so that's, <laughs> I guess, an example of how easy this stage is. Um, I actually once, when I was <laughs> younger, I literally didn't play the stage. I just began the stage, 
uh, arrayed my bodyguards around myself and just stood at the back of my own main camp. And um, you do eventually just win the stage, even if you don't press anything or have any interaction with the controls at all. Uh, right here I wanted to show you what happens uh, when you steal a horse. You can do this horseback combat style, which is kind of inferior uh, to being on foot, uh, despite what you might think. The advantage is it's a little bit harder to get hit by the enemies and they do less damage if they do hit you. Uh, but you do less damage to enemies on the ground and it's very hard to hit enemies because they have to be um, standing beside your feet basically. Which makes things a little bit difficult. One thing you can do with the horse is charge into enemies and knock them down. And if you have uh, the right set of items and the right horse, you can really do some damage like that. Later on in the game you unlock saddles which you can equip as items and this allows you to begin the stage on a horse, uh, usually some sort of special horse, some sort of magical power, uh, and that makes horses a little bit more interesting but for now it's pretty much easier to fight on foot as I'm doing now. You saw I dismounted to fight this enemy officer because it's just so annoying to do whilst you're mounted. One thing I wanted to say uh, right about now was last week I dropped a little bit of a hint that the Yellow Turban Rebellion could be regarded as a, a sort of communist rebellion and I remembered that I didn't actually say why I thought that. Uh, the reason is because the Taoist sect that Zhang Xiao was leading was basically a communist sect uh, if you want to sort of look at it uh, from that angle. They were all about uh, equality of property, uh, equal land rights um, for all citizens, sort of class free treatment, that sort of thing. The sort of thing that we um, associate with communism today. So that's why I decided to uh, label it as sort of a communistic style thing. Now have a look at this. We've got a whole bunch of boulders rolling onto the scene and exploding everywhere. Uh, these boulders are indiscriminate. They take out both uh, enemy and allied troops, which is quite interesting. This event only happens if you defeat Zhang Liang and Zhang Bao in the previous stages. If you didn't do this, I don't think these boulders are here, if I remember correctly. It's what Zhang Zhao does with his magic in order to make up for the lack of Zhang Bao and Zhang Liang. And it's very annoying. You're going to see me take some pretty big damage from these boulders. You have to get up this little hill. <laughs> and I keep getting blindsided by these boulders. Uh, I tried to decide to dodge this one, haha, <laughs> but then I get hit by the edge of that one. Oh, it's a two times combo. Oh, it's a three times combo. A four times combo before I finally make it to the top of the hill. They kept spawning underneath me as I was falling. And my health bar goes all the way down. I'm basically dead now. And now I'm going to show you a little bit of combat uh, over at the gate with an enemy officer where I almost die as a result of having no health uh, from that boulder encounter. You could ask why I didn't go off and look for health at this stage. Uh, I could have just gone to the edge of the map and find a pot or something which would have some health in it. Um, I guess the reason is that I'm just cocky and I don't really mind fighting on no health. The advantage you get to fighting when you have very low health is that your Musu bar is constantly increasing uh, so you get far more chances to use your Musu attack as I'm doing now. Plus it gets powered up to what's called the True Musu. Uh, the True Musu is a more powerful version. It usually sets enemies on fire, doing extra damage, has extra hits, extra range, things like that. Generally uh, a better deal. I managed to take out Huang Xiao, the enemy officer. Some of the enemy officers uh, on the Yellow Turban side aren't historical. Um, I think Huang Xiao is historical, but um, Deng Mao, who uh, Jia Haodun defeated earlier, he's not historical. Uh, Cheng Yuanzi, who you saw me defeat earlier, he's not historical either. Zhou Kang, who I defeated just before I went up that uh, boulder pass, he's not historical. So a number of officers aren't. <laughs> oh, by the way, what I'm doing here is I'm trying to get my bodyguards to kill this guy, which is why I'm not getting involved. Because sometimes it's good to just let your bodyguards kill people to give them experience. And because they're pretty useless to begin with, they only really kill people if there happens to be like one or two of them left on low health. So if I ever notice that that's the situation, I just stand back and allow uh, Rachel and Vice to take out the enemies. This means they're going to get more experience and uh, unlock higher stats and more bodyguards and new weapons uh, faster. So now I'm just rushing in towards the enemy commander, Shang Xiao, <laughs> taking out these archers. Archers are always a pain in Dynasty Warriors games. I think they're much more of a pain in Dynasty Warriors 3 actually, because they, they fired a lot faster in Dynasty Warriors 3 and had a tendency uh, to sort of get all around you and be firing out you from all directions. Although in Dynasty Warriors 4 actually, uh, the archers tend to switch targets to you, uh, which is something that didn't happen in Dynasty Warriors 3. Like if you're in a, a bunch of uh, a melee like I am now with allied and enemy troops, the archers around the outside will specifically fire at where you are rather than just into the group in general, meaning you're more likely to get hit, which is quite annoying. Uh, the good thing is that uh, if the enemy archers are firing into a group and they hit their own troops, the arrows just disappear. 
uh, which makes it much harder to hit you. <laughs> Shang Zhao seems to be flying with a, a throw, which is apparently unblockable, very annoying, and he does the same thing to Vice. How mean. So now I start taking revenge on him by unloading on him with some lightning power attacks. It was around this stage in the battle that I remembered there's a permanent stat-up item, and you can see I got very distracted by the thought that it might be in that box. Uh, there is a permanent stat-up item somewhere in the back of the Yellow Turban camp, I remembered. I think it's actually on the east side, in retrospect, over where uh, Liu Bei's unit currently is. Uh, the message that came up saying, Guan, you defeated Liu Pi. I think Liu Pi is standing next to where the uh, permanent stat-up item is. I'm not sure what it is. I think it's a life up. Uh, and permanently increases the size of your life bar. But I couldn't really be bothered to go and get it since it was so close to the end. I sealed this stronghold, and suddenly the stage just ended. So it's the stage ends even without defeating the enemy commander, and this is the key to what I said earlier about how the AI can win this stage for you. Normally, uh, the AI cannot defeat enemy commanders, you have to do it yourself, uh, but on this stage you don't have to defeat the enemy commander, and that allows you to do the trick where you just don't press any keys and you will eventually win the stage. Let's have a little look at the replay. You can see from the very beginning the morale on the left is higher than the morale we're seeing on the right. Uh, so that's exactly why the allied units would have been able to just plough through the enemies regardless. There is actually one other factor that uh, decides combat other than morale, and it's like formation type. Uh, but this only actually comes into play if two units of equal morale start fighting each other. The game goes to a second tier uh, decision level and bases things on their aggression uh, or their defensive style. But that very rarely comes into play, so I just regard that as nothing. Basically, morale is what matters. Uh, I got a peacock urn, but I already have one, so I just discard it. Pretty useless. I got this dragon amulet, which increases the size of your musu bar, uh, so I'm going to keep that. And an elixir, which fills up your musu gauge faster. Pretty interesting items. Plenty of experience for Sun Shan. He's going to get a couple of ranks up. Unfortunately, nothing happened. Sometimes when you rank up, you unlock new outfits or new item slots, but not this time. So the bodyguards managed to get six kills, and they, uh, they've they unlocked a new member for their squad. So next time I take Sun Jian out, I'm going to have three bodyguards. Pretty sweet. So now it's time to move on to extreme mode. We're going to continue Lu Bu's little campaign. We saw last week that I lost half my health, mainly due to a very <laughs> sort of inconvenient battle with Jia Hao Yuan, where he kept hitting me with his bow. By the way, I'm, I'm saying Jia Hao. I think it's actually pronounced Xia Hu. Uh, this is the influence of Kesson 2, who pronounces uh, Shahu as Jiahao. For some reason, that's got stuck in my head. You can see here, uh, last week I won the Lightning Orb, so I'm going to be taking that into the battle, and it's going to be doing some serious damage. Now I have to select my stage. But this time I decided to just go for the one with the highest exchange rate in order to get some money. It said Zhang Fei is in the area with some companions, and he will indeed be there. Uh, not with any companions, as far as I know, but. Welcome, welcome. So we head into the shop. I was considering buying some health to make up for my losses last time. But I decided to punish myself by not buying any, um, specifically because every time you buy something it inflates the price and it gets more expensive to buy the next time you want to buy it, uh, so it's a good idea to only buy health when you really need it. I decided I'm going to try a little bit harder this time and do this level without losing any health. So I'm going to get up my lightning orb. I'm also going to take this other pointless item I seem to own, the mounted attack uh, increasing item, the horned helm. But the chance of me finding a horse is quite low, so I'm not really going to use that. The objective is to defeat Xiao Yuan again. That, that guy was on the field the second time, and this kind of worried me. I was like, oh god, he's going to kill me just like he did last time. Uh, so I knew I had to be careful for this stage. But it was a chance to take revenge on Xiao Yuan for uh, the damage he did last time. So that's the good side. So the battle uh, opens up. Basically nothing happened initially. I had to run forward for quite a while and uh, defeat a gate captain. Once I'd done that, uh, an enemy officer, Yan Yan. I stood still to let all of his uh, troops crowd him out around me, and then bang! <laughs> that lightning attack is ridiculous. His kill everything move that I talked about last time now kills even more things. Because uh, as the shockwave goes out, everyone it hits gets struck by lightning, and the, the lightning strike paralyzes anyone who's nearby. Which means against crowds of enemies, it's ridiculous. He told me to take a hit there, and then I belatedly used my Musu. Basically, in extreme mode, the idea of your Musu is you use it just before you think you're going to get hit. And unfortunately, because I'm playing on the computer, uh, I was basically mashing my hand on where I thought the Musu key was on the keyboard. It turns out I'd been missing it, which is why it triggered really late. And you're going to see in a few moments I'm going to make the same mistake and actually not be able to trigger the Musu at all and just get frustrated. 
So I really need to sort that out because that's going to be a problem if I can't. There it is. You see this little guy hit me and I sort of saw him coming at me. It's like, oh, he's going to hit me. And I was just hitting the keyboard with the side of my hand and missing the key. So I really need to uh, get that sorted out. An enemy officer here, Sun Xiao, comes up and I'm not going to give him a chance to take me down. <laughs> my lightning, you can see it's just paralyzing everyone, sending them to the ground. And then I can just be there already swinging my weapon as they sit up. Basically not even giving them a chance, it's uh, very cheaty, something that Lu Bu can do but other officers can't. That time I used the Musu correctly, I was about to get hit by the private behind me, but my Musu uh, managed me to move me forward and dodge it slightly. Pesky archer, I decided to take him out. So now we're going to move on a little bit further, I went to the east side of the castle. The whole time I was kind of aware that Zhang Fei's unit, which is on the south side of the map, you can see just about on the back of the map there's some conflict going on. Zhang Fei was slowly dying, his morale kept dropping, which meant he was going to die pretty soon if I didn't go over there myself. And I was kind of enthusiastic because I assumed that the fact that Zhang Fei was mentioned in the text at the beginning of the level meant that something cool would happen if I went over and saved him. So I'm going to plan my way over there now. I found that Jia Hao Dei, uh, one of the Jia Hao family uh, related to Jia Hao Yuan, was also on the field and he was annoying Zhang Fei. I took him out easily and now I expect something to happen right about now, but. Um, Zhang Fei would say something to me, but no, nothing happened. So I decided to entertain myself just taking out all of Jia Dei's troops in the area. I finished that and thought I'll go back over to Zhang Fei. What? You're looking for a fight? And he just gets aggressive. He turned momentarily hostile and then went back to being an ally. Uh, so I didn't know what that was about. Maybe you're meant to kill him or something. I decided not to bother with that and moved on to fight Zhen Ji over on the west side of the castle. This is the Fan Castle map, which is one of my uh, favourite maps. Here she is. So she decides to get all Gandalf on me. That was the correct way to use Musu. Uh, if you looked very closely, you could see Zheng Ji was just beginning her attack animation, uh, but my Musu managed to uh, end it. And then some very uh, good blocking. <laughs> I thought I was going to get hit there as well, but uh, looks like I've just about managed to get used to pressing the block key. It is very different playing on a keyboard, um, both because it's hard to direct your attacks. Uh, because you're using a four-way control rather than a sort of continuous joystick control. Um, and it's just a little bit more uh, difficult uh, to remember all the keys are, etc. I managed to hit Jia Hao Yuan with an arrow there, uh, which was extremely difficult. I don't know how I managed to pull it off, but it paralyzed him just for long enough for me to take out all of his troops and knock him to the ground. And now I'm not going to give him any chance to attack me. I just need to keep hitting him uh, one after the other. You can see I like. I begin my attack even before he's got up so that he'll stand up and then just start getting hit by the attack. I'm not even going to have a chance to start blocking it. Oh, now I get into a power battle. This was the most nervous moment of the battle. Oh, but I won. <laughs> I mashed the keys on my keyboard fast enough to win. It gave me the opening I needed to defeat that fast Jia Hao Yuan. So there you go. It's all over. A victory. I lost a little bit of health from those hits I took uh, from Yan Yan and from that soldier on the north side of the castle, but barely any. So. It wasn't quite as good as I wanted it to do, but it was okay. I got the Peacock Urn, only level 1, but uh, it increases your maximum life bar, which is a little bit of a blessing, not a blessing in disguise, a sort of a, a fake blessing, because if you equip it, it just means your life bar is longer, but it's still empty. However, if you equip it when you have full health, you get the extra health on top of the health you already have, so you really only want to equip it when you know you're going to begin the stage with full health. Very inconvenient. So now we're going to move on to Empire's mode. At the end of the last episode we saw I was beginning a special level against the Yellow Turbans. You can only take one general on this special level. Uh, so I decided to take my commander, Yan Mei. The general you choose to take will get loads of bonus experience points. That's basically the, uh, the idea of this little stage, is to train up one of your officers. It's actually a map which is basically identical to the map we saw last time. Uh, last time, this map is actually a split up version of the map, of the of a total map. Last time we saw the east side, this is the west side of the same map. So the castle in the middle is the same castle we stormed last time. We're just storming it from the other side, which wasn't available last time. Hope that makes sense. Anyway, I started off and basically nothing was happening. All of the enemy officers clustered onto the south side um, to fight with my allies. Try and move forward and took out an unguarded base pretty easily. And then I started to move south into the massive cluster of enemies where it was just full of officers and some of these lieutenant generals who you see like this who follow some of the officers around to give them support. 
This attendant general uses the force on me and seems to be flying backwards uh, before I can engage. Now Cheng Yuan Ji, uh, the fictional officer I talked about a little bit earlier, starts wailing on me and I can't hit him off his horse. Uh, I take a little bit of revenge by using my moves to take out all of his troops and finally manage to get him off his horse. Then the emulator started to bug, so I had to uh, play <laughs> play with things a bit and then managed to get it working again and we continued on. That happens every now and again, particularly on Empire's mode, I don't know why. Normally I have to sort of pause the game and uh, fiddle around with a few things and then it comes back. So basically I'm just going to take out this officer and then there's going to be a couple more officers to take out on the south side and that's going to be the main conflict of this Yellow Turban stage over. It's much easier uh, than the Yellow Turban stage we saw in the normal Dynasty Warriors 4. Maybe since this is the last time we're going to be seeing the Yellow Turbans uh, despite seeing them so many times recently, I'll tell you how the Yellow Turban Rebellion kind of ended. Uh, the Rebellion was pretty successful for the first couple of months. They captured loads of places, and particularly they captured loads of weapons, which allowed them to field armies, as we see them doing here. Um, this was a peasant rebellion after all, so to begin with, all they would have had was like tools, um, or their bare hands. But they basically stormed tons of government offices uh, who weren't expecting it and stole all the weapons. This allowed them to field armies fairly easily. You see these sorcerers appear. These are sort of uh, female soldiers who shoot these ice things who are hitting me now, which is very annoying. Occasionally the ice things freeze you in position, and when you're frozen you're free to be attacked by the enemies, which is particularly dangerous if an enemy officer is around. I get attacked by two enemy officers simultaneously here, Zhang Liang and Gao Sheng. Come at me. Gao Sheng is another one of the historically uh, made-up officers. He's in Romance of the Three Kingdoms, the book, but there's no evidence of him historically. Luckily I picked up this Musu 10 seconds, which gives you 10 seconds of free Musu use. Uh, so I use it to just continuously slash at Zhang Liang. Uh, once it runs out I just drain my entire Musu bar as well to get some extra damage, and I managed to kill him. And it made some phantom troops who had appeared earlier disappear. Pretty handy. But yes, after the first few months of the Yellow Turban success, generals like Huang Fu Song, Zhu Jun, and Hei Jin, all of which we've seen come on forces against the Yellow Turbans in the game, uh, began to really defeat uh, their concentrations of forces. Uh, in particular, all of the Zhang brothers were defeated in field battles and killed as a result, which basically meant the Yellow Turban uh, lost its leadership, uh, they lost their leadership, sorry, and they pretty much just sort of fizzled out. Um, although there would be plenty of aftershocks, uh, basically for the next 10 years, uh, Yellow Turban aftershock rebellions would keep coming. Here's Bo Zhang, so I'm going to get some uh, revenge for not getting to kill him as Sun Zhan, I'm going to get to kill him as Yan Mei instead, so that's pretty good. Anyway, yeah, lots of aftershock rebellions. Oh god, Bo Zhang, he started running away here, and I thought that is incredibly cheeky, I'm not going to get the experience of killing him. Luckily, uh, some speed boots were dropped. So I managed to just sprint after him. You're not getting away, Bojang. Here I come. <laughs> Took him down with one slice. Pretty one. nice. So I'm going to get that extra experience now. What was I just saying? Oh yes, these Aftershock Rebellions, which happened uh, for many years after the Yellow Turban Rebellion was uh, defeated by these field armies, uh, would be the the catalyst for Cao Cao, or Cao Cao, as I mentioned last time, uh, as rise to power. Regarding pronunciations, I'm usually just going to use the game's pronunciation, because those are the ones I know. Uh, unless I'm feeling particularly pedantic, I'll try and pronounce it correctly. But anyway, he uh, was basically in charge of putting down all of the Aftershock rebellions and all of the related rebellions that came after the initial Yellow Turban uprising. And this took him about 10 years, as I said, but he would gain a massive amount of political power and military strength as a result of the, uh, the trust he was being given by the Empire. And he would go on to betray this trust and basically usurp power over the Han Dynasty, or what remained of it, all for himself. Here's Cheng Yuanji yet again. Take him down pretty easily. You could say, actually, that the Yellow Turban Rebellion was successful overall, uh, because the Han Empire did fall as a result of the Yellow Turban Rebellion, just not in the way they thought it would. It was more about the fact that the Yellow Turban Rebellion allowed for a lot of grandstanding on the place of the noble families of China. I had a lot of rivalries were built up, and the subsequent ordeal with Dong Zhuo, who we're going to see uh, beginning next week, uh, basically led to the complete destruction of the, the power of the Han, and chaos uh, came over the land. 
as the government disappeared, lawlessness and banditry uh, became the name of the game for most people. You see I got frozen as I mentioned by those uh, magicians. Luckily no one hit me while I was frozen. Sometimes when you're frozen you, you um, your defense is halved and this only occurs well, it's kind of complicated. It only occurs due to certain attacks. It's when an attack that would have launched you off the ground hits you when you're frozen, you take double damage from it. Because when you're, if you're airborne being hit, you take half damage. Uh, so if they're using an attack which is supposed to be used on airborne opponents when you're on the ground, because you're frozen to the ground, it effectively does double damage. That's what I mean. Not very good at explaining that. Anyway, here we go, taking out Zhang Xiao. Looks like I'm also going to get revenge for not being able to take out Zhang Xiao on Sun Zhan's stage earlier by taking him out here with Yan Mei. I was paying special attention to all the sorceries um, because seeing that I was on low health, I knew it was possible for me to die if I got frozen and Zhang Xiao used his moves to attack on me or something. Uh, luckily, that didn't happen. I had Sun Zhan here helping me out. So even the AI version of Sun Zhan is going to get some revenge on Zhang Xiao. Now I take him out with a true Musu stage, true Musu attack, sorry. Sets him on fire, tons of shockwaves and slashes, not much he could do about that. Another victory for the forces of Yang Mei. So my empire doesn't directly gain anything for this, uh, because I was just helping a coalition force. On a lot of turns you get the option to help coalition forces, especially if you're allied to other empires. Uh, those empires will be doing things and you can offer to send them troops into a coalition to help them out, which means your empire doesn't gain anything that turn, but the officer you send just gains lots of extra experience. Ended the Yellow Turban Rebellion. I hope this will bring peace back to the land. You hope wrong, Yan Mei. You know you intend to conquer the land yourself. So the Yellow Turban territories all disappear and they just randomly get assigned to nearby empires. Luckily I wasn't lucky enough to sorry, unluckily, I wasn't lucky enough to get one for myself. So now we move back onto the political stage, but we're gonna be seeing which proposals I pick next time on Romance of the Three Games. So that's all for this week and all for fighting with the Yellow Turbans. We're probably never going to see them again unless I manage to do a legend mode with them in, but hopefully not. So leave any feedback you have below and subscribe to this channel if you wish to see more episodes of Romance of the Three Games.